guys welcome back to your 29th UDK tutorial and in this tutorial actually before I even tell you guys what this tutorial is about I guess I owe you guys a little apology I know I haven't made a tutorial in like m maybe a week maybe even over a week but I've been incredibly busy some guys sent me 200 tutorials in the mail and I had to upload those to my YouTube channel and also my website and that takes a whole lot of time so anyways don't hate me for that because I've been super busy working my butt off just so I could have time to make these tutorials but anyways there's my excuse now on with the tutorials so like I said this tutorial is your first lesson in static meshes now for now just think of a static mesh as a 3d model and I know a lot of you hardcore guys are saying, but a 3D model isn't exactly a static mesh because it can be yada yada yada. Well, technically they're not the same thing, but for the sake of this tutorial, just assume a static mesh is basically a 3D model. So basically, whenever we're going to be creating our own static meshes in like 3ds Max or Maya or Blender, we're going to be creating models like guns and cars and chairs, houses, weapons, trees, all that stuff. But for now, I didn't teach you guys how to use those programs yet, so we're stuck with working with the built-in static meshes that came with the UDK. So just like materials and textures, the UDK, whenever you download it, came with a bunch of static meshes. And as you can see, these are basically just 3D models of, what's this, the lily pads and uh, columns and you know whatever the heck this thing is leaves so it comes with a bunch of 3d models that we can use so let's go ahead and <laughs> I might as well say this I usually try to plan out my tutorials or at least think of what I'm gonna talk about before I make a tutorial but in this case I just decided to kinda wing it so if this tutorial is kinda bad um, it's because I haven't really planned out what I'm gonna build yet so let's go ahead and like build a simple house or, or a castle or something so the very first thing we need is a floor so go ahead and type in floor and by the way make sure you have static meshes checked right here and a bunch of floor 3d models are gonna pop up so go ahead and find anything you like you might not want to copy me because like I said I'm gonna kinda wing this one but like I like this floor right here so in order to add a static mesh to your level just go ahead and grab it pull it out and drop it right in your level how easy is that so let's go ahead and X out of the content browser and get a good nice angle here and that looks pretty good however I'm gonna be building a kinda of big level probably so the first thing I want to do is scale this static mesh now in order to scale the static mesh we could go up here to scale or non-uniform scaling but the easier way is just to select it and down here I don't even know if I guys if I told you this but this is your scaling form on the bottom this first form right here is for uniform scaling if you on scale the entire thing on the same scale basically so I'm gonna go ahead and change this to 2.0 which means I'm gonna double its size now before I uh, go on you can see that this 3d model just doubled in size so let me talk to you guys about these other forms right here I don't even know if I told you guys about this already but if not well if I did I'm just gonna cover it again this first one is the X the second one is the Y and the third one is the Z so if you switch over local coordinates if you like what scale this one by three you would see that the Y direction which is the green scaled by three so let's change that back to one to get it back to normal and we'll just leave this to make it twice its average size so now what I want to do is let me think of something I want to build our I got a little idea in mind so let me go in my top view I'm going to scroll out a little bit and what I'm going to be doing is copying this by holding alt and dragging and let me get a better view in my perspective mm, not good enough yet and there we go so let me go ahead and alt drag this a couple more times until I get it just right where I want it and there we go so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be building a little platform and now if I hold control and alt I can select them all and now I'm gonna be dragging this over just a tidbit right about there so what I'm gonna be doing eventually is I'm gonna be building a bridge from point A to point B so that's why I want a little gap in between but for now let's say this is like the starting point for the player and this is where like the castle is going to be so we probably want to do this control all and select this and copy this 
a couple more times to give our castle, you know, a nice little platform. So we just copy that like three more times. So we got a nice uniform. All right, looks good enough to me. Like I said, I'm just gonna kind of wing this sort of. So basically, the idea that just popped into my head is our players are gonna start here, cross a bridge, and the castle is gonna be here where he can run around and you know do whatever the heck he wants. So now, with that being said, I got my platform, and now it's time to make a bridge. However, I just thought of something. Before I even start making my bridge, I want to talk to you guys about the concept of static meshes because you guys are probably saying this. All right, Becky, first of all, I'm looking at all these static meshes which are pretty much 3D models, as I can see. However, whenever you load these into a game on your PlayStation or computer or Xbox, your computer has to process all of these and output them on the screen. And look at this, I just made like 16 or even more 3D models, so isn't my computer guy like, gonna lag and bog down? Well, this is the beauty of static meshes, and this is probably the coolest thing about them. Your computer only really works to create the very first copy of that static mesh. Once your graphics card has this very first copy loaded in the memory, then the only thing it has to do is duplicate it. So that's how graphics cards works. They basically take a copy of something and that's really the only work they do. And from then on, copying them is incredibly easy. So this, the work it does to take this and the work it does to create all of these, it doesn't even compare. I mean, it's incredibly easy for your computer to create all of these copies. It takes almost no work at all. So that's why if you notice whenever you're playing video games, pay attention because take a quick quick look and you can see that the levels are typically made up of the same model just duplicated for example they might make um, all the floors the same or all the walls the same and that way they can create huge levels with only a few models so keep that in mind whenever you're creating your levels in the UDK that you typically want to reuse static meshes as often as you can to opti optimize your game so that's your first little optimization tip. Many more to come. That's what you guys have to look forward to. So let's go ahead and add our bridge right now. So I'm going to go ahead and open my content browser again. And I'm going to go ahead and type in bridge. But I'm going to spell it right because that usually helps. So go ahead and let's see what pieces. This one looks kind of interesting, but I can't really think of anything to use that for. So go ahead and drag this bridge panel on your screen. And the first thing I'm going to notice is that is awfully tinky, like tinky winky, the Teletubby. So the first thing I'm going to do is maximize this by a scale of 2.5. And let me see how that looks. Hmm, not too bad. So now let's go ahead and rotate this. And we're going to rotate this 90 degrees right there. And we're also going to move this so it's somewhat centered. doesn't need to be directly centered. And by the way, look at this. I'm moving my mouse right, but it's going up. I'm moving it left, and it's going down. I'm moving it up, and it's going left. And a lot of you guys are saying, what the heck is going on? Why is that? Well, let me tell you guys this. Right now, I am in local coordinates. Because, well, let me try to explain this to you guys. Whenever you have a static mesh and you put it on the screen, you could flip it upside down, left and right, you can turn it in all sorts of directions. So if these coordinates were the same, check this out. If I have this right here and I want to drag this up, I'm dragging it on the blue or Z axis. But what if I flip this to the left 90 degrees? Well then the blue axis would be facing left. So that's why whenever we're working in local coordinates, the coordinates change because depending on which way you're turning your static mesh, the coordinates are going to change with it as well. However, if we go up here and switch this to world coordinates, then no matter which way we turn or twist our static mesh, the coordinates are going to remain the same. So basically just remember that. Whenever you're working in local coordinates, then the coordinates are going to turn and twist with your 3D model. But whenever you're working in world coordinates, the coordinates are going to be the same no matter how you twist your 3D model. A nice little tip. So that's your next tip of the day. So the first thing I want to do is bring this to the base right there. Let me make sure it's touching. Maybe one click down. 
All right, and now what I want to do is go in my top view and just slide this over somewhere in the middle, like that right there. So now I have that right there. I'm going to go ahead and hold Alt and drag it. And also, once it's dragged, I want to rotate it just like 180 degrees. Looks pretty sweet. So now I got my two bridge platforms in place. And now the next step is to add a bridge in between those because, like I said, my player is going to start right over here. And in order for him to get over here, we don't want him to do the leap of faith. We want him to have a nice little bridge to walk in between. So that's what I'm going to be doing in the next tutorial. But for now, that's all you guys get. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.